Welcome to Home Gym History, brought to you by Garage Gym Radio. And this is part two of a strongman-focused Home Gym History special with Kurt from the Kurt Locker on Instagram and YouTube. He has a website as well that you can check him out. Thanks for being here, Kurt. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here for part two. Yeah, so in episode nine of Home Gym History, we covered the deadlift, and that's a big part of Strongman. And then episode mm -hmm. 10, the part one of this series, we covered a couple different implements. We covered the axle, Strongman log, and we got into a little bit of the circus dumbbell. This time around, I want to kind of bring the listeners back to that Terry Todd quote about lifting familiar objects. And I want to think to start out to kind of warm the waters a little bit about the loading medleys in World's Strongest Man that I've seen, and also in some other events, some amateur events and uh, some other strongman events. So there's typically five objects that are loaded onto a platform, at least in World's Strongest Man. And the objects have been all kinds of wacky stuff, anchors, anvils, chains, lobster pots, all kinds. But when it comes to the home gym, if I want to incorporate some of that, let's say like as a finisher in my workout, or maybe on an off day, uh, maybe on a strongman Saturday, what can I load? How can I set up a loading medley in the home gym? So my opinion on this, the easiest thing if you want to get into loading is to purchase fillable sandbags. And I'm not talking about like your, your traditional brute force with the handlebags. The ones I'm talking about are usually about 16 inches in diameter and vary in height uh, according to how much weight they can hold. But sandbags are usually the easiest way that you can start to do some of those loading medleys outside of walking around your house and, you know, finding your children, maybe and <laughs> loading, loading your children, you know, just be careful, yeah, yeah. don't hurt your kids. Well, Garage Gym Radio produces Do You Even Lift Bro with two of my favorite do-it-yourself guys, Matt Pendergraft and Kyle from Kaizen DIY Gym. And the reason I bring them up is that sandbags are a very DIY thing you can pull off too. And to yep. connect to you and your military experience, Kurt, my first sandbags were actually U.S. issue military laundry bags that I bought at the BX. And then later I wanted to buy a little bit more of them to make more sandbags for myself. And I found them on Amazon for about 15 bucks. So if you want to just dabble in sandbags, for me, it worked. I would get them up to chest height and drop them sometimes. Yep. And nothing bad happened all the way up through about 100 to 125 pounds. Uh, after that, I had a 150 pounder that split. So Drop 15 bucks and grab one of those. And now I have Iron Mind uh, sandbags that do a much better job. I haven't had them split and I have them heavier. Now, getting into the history of some things, when it comes to loading and when it comes to, you know, picking a, a large object up off the floor, my favorite would be a stone, the Ooh. Atlas Stone. What's your experience with Atlas Stones? Atlas Stones are one of my favorite events. Uh, I don't think I have a favorite strongman event, but stones are something that I have always just loved. I'll, I'll send you a video so you can see it, but nice. I still have the video of the first time that I loaded an 18-inch stone. Ah. I didn't have tacky. I had nothing but chalk on, but you're right. There's just something. We talked about this in episode mm -hmm. one. There's something primal about picking something like that up. Um, sure. Now, the funny part is after I loaded that stone for the first time, and for the listeners, an 18-inch stone weighs about 230 to 240 pounds. Mm -hmm. So I loaded it over my yoke, and uh, it started to roll away towards my neighbor's house. Uh, so in the video, nice, you see nice. you see me lift it, and I'm, I think I'm like, F yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm like, oh, crap. And you see me run around the yoke to go catch the stone before it rolls across the street. Oh, so, man. Yeah, my but, no, I love stones. My backyard has a slight slope, but, yes. so I don't often take it into consideration because it's slight. But similar experience, uh, my heaviest stone that I own is actually 230. It's an 18-inch, and it wasn't even that one. It was like, I don't even know the inch on it, but a 178-pound stone that I have. I, I was so excited. I'm celebrating, and then like my children are frolicking around the <laughs> yard, and a large stone is starting to roll down the yard. I'm kind of panicked, grabbed it. It's no the one scene was injured. From Indiana Jones. Exactly. I'm like, run, <laughs> two-year-olds, run. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I no one was injured. It was fine. Um, yep. But getting no one calls stones, CPS. Yeah, exactly. Like all <laughs> is well. <laughs> yeah. But they, I store them in my home gym because I very often I'll throw a bar onto my rack and I've got a piece of like carpet around it. Mm -hmm. One of my 
safety pipes, if you will. I have safety straps now, and one of my safety pipes, I just throw that on the rack, and then I'll use my drop pads that are currently my podcast studio desk, and ah. I will just do a little over bar stone work here in the home gym. But getting into the history, we're going to go way back in history. Like, you know, this is like buckle up, Marty to McFly, because... Yeah, exactly. Are we going to, are we we are going going to England? To we're going to Scotland? We are going to... We're going to go to Scotland. We're going to go to Iceland. Uh, I'm referencing the shirt I'm wearing is Full Sturker, a great documentary by Rogue. Yeah, I mean, we're going way back before the strongman, the classic strongman we're talking back. And we're going back to the 1700s, even before that with Iceland. So in Iceland, they were lifting stones to prove their strength. Full Sturker means full strength. So you can go to Iceland. Yep. You can go to one of the national beaches there, and you can try to pick up the half Sturker, which is half strength. And do you know the story behind this? Like, what? It, they're not just proving their strength for no reason. Why are they doing that on the beaches in Iceland hundreds of years ago, Kurt? Any ideas? So I, I have seen the documentary, and I mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Um, I can't exactly speak to what they're proving. I want to say yeah, it has yeah. something to do with ships, but I can't remember. Yeah. No, you're on the money. So basically a, a ship captain to see, hey, are you going to get full pay, half pay? That's how you proved how strong you were and what kind of worker you were going to be. You can still go try to lift those stones, and those aren't what you picture with Atlas stones. They're not perfect mm -hmm. spheres. They're rounded. From what I've read, I've been mentioning all these places I want to go to see the Sear Museum in Montreal and the Slater Hardware Store. Well, also Iceland. I want to go lift some stones, the Husafell, for example, and these smooth stones on the beach for full sturker. And if we hop, skip, and a jump over to Scotland, we have the Inverse Stones. And that's, in my best opinion, and the opinion of experts, the, the direct descendant, if you will, the direct inspiration of Atlas Stones as we see them. So the Inverse Stone, there is a singular Inverse Stone that was at an inn in the 1700s in Scotland. And it was basically a toy. It was, it was something that people would mess around with that stayed at the inn. You know, this is before TV. This is before... You know, yep. the internet and things. You don't have anything to do. You're stopping by. Let's go lift that heavy stone. Well, you know, it got some notoriety. And as it got some notoriety, people started to kind of pick up on that. Hey, this is, this is fun. Fast forward a couple hundred years. And we have a competition in Glasgow featuring the Inverse Stone in 1963. And I'll drop a picture from it. I love this picture, this gentleman picking up uh, what were called the McGlashan stones later on, but picking up the Inverse Stone and, you know, competing with it. And we're fast forwarding to the McGlashan stones. That's what the super smooth balls that were carved from granite and used in the Highland Games competitions uh, were called. And as far as Highland Games, there's, you know, there's a pretty close relationship with Strongman. Do you have any knowledge yes. with Highland Games and Strongman? Yes. Uh, one, I am not good at the <laughs> hammer throw. Uh, I almost died doing the hammer throw, but not from the hammer. From We're hearing stake. a lot of death stories on this episode, Kerry. We've got an Atlas. Yeah. Stone, a I've strongman so log on the last one. Yeah. So my, on the inside of my weightlifting belt, it says, if I die, I die, because nice. I almost die all the time. God, <laughs> God is looking out for me. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, as for, uh, I've never competed in Highland, but okay. I have done Highland events in a competition. So we're talking about stones right now, mm -hmm. um, a Bramer throw. Mm. So I did a Bramer throw in competition. It was very similar to a shot put, uh, okay. except for that it's a natural stone. Um, cool. But other than that, pretty, pretty close to the same thing. Um, definitely similar movements because there's a you can turn a little bit and you, you throw it off your cheek essentially okay uh with your hand um and then i've done uh, a hammer throw but really nothing else i've, tr I've tried a caber toss oh uh, my goodness because it it looks so cool it's like a miniature uh, it, telephone pole basically it, that it, then it, you <laughs> try to flip am i interpreting that correctly yeah so uh, i don't know the rules and someone that does highland <laughs> games would judge me uh harshly but from what i understand uh, you carry it a, a set distance or you carry it for a bit and then you mm -hmm. have to throw it and you're trying to upend it so that it falls and then falls away from you. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how it's scored, but yes. Hmm. So I am familiar with Highland Games uh, and I've had some stone experience uh, in with the Highland Games with the Bramer Toss. Well, and I mean, similar to Strongman, there are the Highland Games of Scotland, but there's also amateur competitions like a shout out to my buddy cornfed highlander that on instagram i mean i've seen him put on the kilt and go do his thing with his instagram 
posts. So it looks fun. I've waited to my 40s to get into Strongman. Maybe in my 50s, I'll pick up the caber toss. I've, I'll clear my kids out of the backyard before I try that one. <laughs> yeah. So getting on with the history of the stones, we go from the Highland Games and the McGlashan Stones to then World's Strongest Man is you know, still thriving in the 80s. And in 1986, they pick up an event that they call the Stones of Strength. And it's featuring the McGlashan Stones. And that's the birth of basically Atlas Stones. They just weren't called Atlas Stones at first. So then we go from there to 1993, and that's the first time. And you can watch a video. I'll link it on my Instagram for Home Gym History of that competition in 1993 where they're referred to as the Atlas Stones. And there's a little bit of a popular misconception. It took me a while to sort it out. Some people think that the Moroccan uh, World's Strongest Man event that – where in the Atlas Mountains is where the name comes from, but that is not correct. It's actually before that, 1993 competition, they were named the Atlas Stones to pay homage to the Greek Titan of Endurance. Yeah, so that's what I would assume it was, is the yeah. Greek God Atlas. But. Well, when I was researching this episode, I just kept finding, that's what I had always assumed. I mean, it's literally the... Isn't it the trophy for World's Strongest Man? I mean, he's holding... It is. Atlas yeah. holding the world. Yeah. It'd be really weird that that's their trophy, but yet, no, no, no. It's named after mountains. <laughs> yes. So, but all these websites kept saying that, and all these places I looked kept saying that, and then finally, the video on YouTube proves that it predates it to 1993, and it shows them calling it Atlas Stones, a new implement, the Atlas Stones. So... They've been used at every World's Strongest Man since then, except for one. So, Strongman Trivia, any idea which Strongman did not use Atlas Stones? I, I don't know this. Um, because usually, for me, the, the, the pinnacle of the competition mm -hmm. is that final event. So, no, what, uh, it wasn't China. It was... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. That would be in Africa. So, they... Set aside the Atlas Stones, and they used what they called the Africa Stones, and these had a different shape to them, and that was in place of the Atlas Stones. So I have not dug up a picture of it yet. Hopefully, I can find a picture of them, but there's a little strongman history. So you mentioned on the last episode, and if you haven't listened to the last episode, please finish this episode. It's okay. You, you could go back and listen to episode 10. But in episode 10, part one of this, you mentioned going to Slater's Hardware and seeing a large 560-pound stone. Who lifted that one? So that was the uh, – I'm going to get this wrong, and people are going to judge me and think <laughs> I'm not a Strongman fan. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, that was Brian Shaw who yeah. lifted that one that I'm talking about, and that was the world record. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say that Tom Stoltman mm -hmm. may have overtaken him in that record. Yeah. Uh Am I right there? You're absolutely right. So for a long time, for several years, just about a decade, Brian Shaw was the master of the stones, if you will. He had several records. He like he would break his previous record. And uh, I'll drop some pictures of that. And I'm a huge Shaw Strength fan. Go follow yeah. Brian and everything that he does. Now there's the Shaw Classic, which in my humble mm -hmm. opinion will become one of the major strongman events of the future. Yes. And, man, Brian Shaw, shout out to him. He also embraces vintage weights. So vintage weights, PGH, I'm always tagging him and things because he's lifting blobs. He has Yorks. Yep. He's got all kinds of stuff. So back on track, the Scottish heritage must have had something to do with it. But, you know, the Stoltman brothers, uh, Luke Stoltman is, I would say his specialty is uh, the log. He's, he's yes. very good at pressing. And then Tom, the younger brother, who is now two-time World's Strongest Man the past two years, Tom Stoltman, he lifted a 602-pound stone to set the record. And, I mean, it in the truest sense of Strongman, in my opinion, is just a spectacle. Because it was still in kind of the, the day – it was – after Half Thor did his 501 kilogram deadlift in total lockdown kind of scenario, it was after that, but it was still like a live stream event. Like people, there was some people there, but it wasn't, you know, a huge crowd. But it's still kind of a crowd, and there's a wooden barricade, and I'll drop a picture of it. Not barricade, but wooden over the bar platform, yep, if you will. Standard. And this stone, I mean, Tom Stoltman is a giant. 
but this stone makes him look small. I mean, it is so gargantuan, and he did it smooth. I mean, he didn't like you know he didn't struggle with it. So I, I would wait and to shirtless. say shirtless. Yeah, and shirtless. He's going to go yeah. up in uh, that. And the reason shirtless matters, by the way, is that you know long ago the Inverstone, long ago the Icelandic Sturker, full Sturker stones, they. No tacky involved. What's tacky for nope. someone who's never used it, never kind of competed? And why does that matter with a shirtless man? So uh, tacky is a pine tar. Basically, it's a pine tar. And then mm -hmm. there's some proprietary blends out there. And it just kind of enhances your grip. Now, it's really cool. Tacky is used in a lot of things. So, for instance, golf, you use tacky towels. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are if you want to whoop someone's butt <laughs> in, a, uh, in a rope competition, okay. oh, a tug of war. Tug wow. of war. There you go. Yeah, so uh, what I'll occasionally do on base is we'll have like, nice. a field day, and they're like, oh, tug yeah. of war competition. Mandatory I totally fun. cheat. Yeah, so I totally cheat. I bring tacky, and I that will bring cleats and tacky, and I will destroy you. Because <laughs> uh, everybody else is like wrapping it around oh, your yeah. body, and once I grab whatever I'm grabbing, it's stuck to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it can matter because uh, now for mm -hmm. me, I don't load sh uh, stones without a shirt. Mm -hmm. um, I'm new school. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm just so subconscious uh, <laughs> about my body, so insecure. But uh, a lot of guys will not wear it because they don't want the tacky to slip on their shirt. They want the tacky okay. to catch between their chest and the stone. I got they don't you. put tacky on their chest, but they yeah, put yeah. it into, so it's one less barrier. And I'd assume, you know, not with the world record where he's just about to lift the stone, but I'd assume if it's a competition, there's some residual tacky all over that thing by the time you get oh, yes. to it. Um, yep. So, I, you know, I... Not to get too much information about myself, but I just think of chest hair. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna wear a shirt just because I'd rather it rip my shirt than have like a 40 year old virgin scene. Is that the movie where he gets the wax yep. and he's screaming? Where's, ah, Kelly which, Clarkson. Which by the way was a real scene. Yeah, yes, they yes. actually waxed Steve Crow's exactly. That. That's what I picture so in I, my mind for Tom Stoltman. Like every time he competes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. so so there's not too much because there's a lot of stuff that the stone will also touch. It'll pick okay. up and reduce that tack. Fair um, the big reason that I actually like to wear, so I, I hang all my shirts up, and okay. uh, you can't see it in the frame right now, but I will always, uh, in a competition where we load stones, some mm -hmm. guys will change to a, a crappy shirt, okay. a shirt that they always use for stones. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I never wear my competition shirts after I compete. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's stones... I don't wash the shirt when I'm done. Nice. I hang it up with the tacky on it. And for me, it's scars. part of the memory. Yeah, yeah, the battle scar of it. And the tacky cool. looks kind of cool on there, I think. That is Plus, cool. it's a pain in the ass to wash. <laughs> oh, my wife would kill me. If, if she's like, oh, what yes. is all over our washing machine, Rob? I'll be like, ah, oh, that's uh, tacky. So, <laughs> no, I have not washed anything that has tacky on it. I, I try to behave myself when it comes to that kind of thing. So... As far as the home gym and bringing Atlas Stones, I mean, they take up some major real estate in my home gym, but I love them. I don't mind. But let's say someone wants to get into this. They, they you know, they're having the nostalgic memories I have of, you know, World's Strongest Man, or they're catching it now yep. on CBS and various things, or they're seeing the Stones. It's um, in the Rogue Invitational, um, Shaw Classic, Clash. the Clash. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, Stones are everywhere. How can you get into it? What are some of your options as a home gym uh, lifter? So depending on uh, the strength and who you are, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm looking up and I'm looking at all my stone molds right now. So I have uh, Slater molds. I think that Slater makes the best molds. I've had hybrid molds, which are mm -hmm. another option. Uh, they work just fine. I just don't prefer them personally. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure that Will Development, which is another stone maker, he's a more modern stone maker, uh, he makes a really good light tacky blend, but I'm pretty sure okay. he'll probably get into making his own molds as well. Hmm. But if you purchase like a 16 inch mold, um, for most people, female or male, uh, regardless of strength, a 16 inch mold is a pretty good place to start. Okay. Um, an 18 inch is also a really good place to start. And then you can make as many concrete stones as you want. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a little bit of a little bit more money to spend in loading. So we talked about loading at the beginning of this episode mm -hmm. um, and how it's great for all sorts of different strength and conditioning uh, odd objects. Mm -hmm. uh, a Mike Bartos Power Center Stone of Steel is okay. what I actually use in this gym right now. 
Um, I didn't I know the name have of it. Concrete stones. Yeah, the stone of yeah, steel. I, I saw you lifting it, and I was like, oh, that's one of those like metal ones. But I didn't know what it was. So it's power center. Okay, cool. Yep. So it's a power center stone of steel. It's a uh, eighteen inch, twenty inch diameter. Okay. I don't actually know. It's either eighteen or twenty. So well, we'll I drop a link to it in the description with yeah. the sources, and uh, you yep. guys can check it out. And it weighs about a hundred and. 20 pounds empty. Okay. Um, but that's been a good option. It's, it's a lot harder to load though, because it slips a little bit more. All right. Um, but yeah, so I think for most people, uh, starting with like a 16 or an 18 inch mold and then making your own, okay. or you can jump on Craigslist and you'll find people like yeah. uh, Doug Madewell. So Madewell strength. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're local to Ohio, he'll make you a stone. That's how I got mine. Uh, I, I bought mine used. You know, anyone yep. who listens to me on my own YouTube channel, Vintage Weights PGH, knows that I'm all about the used market. And yeah, I, two of them were definitely someone's side hustle. You know, <laughs> they were just yes. pumping out like, oh, I need a three week lead time. Let me know what you want. And I'm like, okay, you're clearly making these. And then the other ones were all just like someone getting rid of them, just didn't want them anymore. So, and I have them all the way down to my lightest one is actually 18 pounds, and my kids will use that one. So it's that's an eight inch, yeah, right? Yep. So, yep. so it, I have an eight inch mold. I make trophies out of those. There you go. Okay. Nice. Yep. So yeah, I, um, I, I like that little, they call it the baby one. I like the baby stone cause then my kids can get in there and they can lift. So shout out to my four children. As far as, uh, loading and things like that, there's also with the stone, you can pick it up and walk with it. And I've yes. seen various, you know, like the Husfeld stone, for example, the, mm. the legend of the Husfeld stone going back to Iceland involves the walk with it and and letting the sheep out of the pen that's right very good because it's the door to the sheep pen i mean that was the whole legend of it is that the i believe the farmer's daughter would move yep. be able to move it so at various strongman competitions you know you'd walk with it but when i think of walking with a weight and strongman and i think of home gym i think a very accessible thing is the farmer's walk so oh absolutely yes do you know the history of the farmer's walk where does it come from what is it why is it called the farmer's walk i actually don't i don't know uh any of the history in the farmer's walk okay. other than i assumed it was farmers yeah, yeah. Uh, carrying buckets or something exactly so you're correct in that respect i mean that's why it's called the farmer's walk is that well it's manual labor you're picking up two heavy things you're walking with them but it debuted in new zealand at the 1983 world's strongest man as the Fergus walk and they were wooden implements uh, weighing about 176 pounds each and it was really the thickness more than the weight that caused some difficulty and I'll drop mm -hmm. some pictures there's various farmers walk implements that can be used and have been used over the years so uh, for example there's a picture of Novikov lifting the giant uh, farmers walk implements that are humongous pieces of wood and steel there's also if we go back there's a great picture of kaz and john paul uh sigmerson with what looked like torpedo yeah yeah they're they're, they're yeah. like they're like running with them and yeah it was like down the road though like yeah. they turned oh, yeah. and stuff yeah and, that, that doesn't happen much anymore yeah i mean they're they basically look like gas cylinders to me or propane, yep. uh, not propane. That's wrong, but it's some type of large cylinder, um, like an oxyacetylene tank. Exactly. That then have the handle welded onto it. And I don't doubt someone's yep. done that out there. So what kind of farmer handles have you seen just in competition and things like that? And then also coming back to the home gym, what are our options? If I want to incorporate, you know, farmer's walk. Well, first off, farmers walks are great metabolic conditioning mm -hmm. um, as far as from that perspective. Now, for farmers, again, I like to group things in twos. So there's two diff two general types. You have your top loading or your you know somewhat top loading, and then you have your front loading. Uh, front loading are where most home gym owners will probably start a pair of Rogues, uh, a pair of Frey. Okay. Titan, of course, has them that mm -hmm. look very similar to the Rogues. Um, but they're pretty common. They're front-loading farmer handles. They weigh about 25 pounds each. Uh, they're made out of one and a half inch Schedule 80. I'm looking over here at my set, which was made by a very close friend of mine, uh, the same guy who actually made my first axle. Nice. Uh, and it was made from the same steel. Um, and then the, the top-loading ones are more of what you see in competitions. 
Uh, they're easier to change between uh, competitors. So okay. as you move up in weight class, you move up in weight. It's a whole lot easier to throw weight on the top mm -hmm. versus having to like pick one end up. And there's no deadlift jack for these things. That's my so you complaint. Have to, like, pick one end up. Yeah, and I have I, wacky I like, the... like do-it-yourself ones that I got just randomly. It was one of those used market pickups where I was buying a bunch of stuff, and these things yep. came with it. And I was like, well, I don't have farmer's handles. And I, it drives me nuts loading them up. It's just annoying. So I really want to get some top loaded ones. It'd be great to get. I've seen some people make like a, a frame conversion where absolutely a so piece uh, music, links them. So Music Metalworks, okay. that's who uh, made mine. Bartos also has great. carry converters, or what Bartos calls them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that way you can get it to be a frame or a farmer's handle. Uh, then there's also other developments. So Doug Madewell, Madewell Strength, he yeah, yeah. makes ones that have adjustable height handles. Uh, he has, That's I believe cool. he has converters, and he has either front yeah. or top loading. Um, but for the for the listeners, yeah. though, uh, the handle is really part of what makes it difficult because it's usually made out of 1.3 inch or greater diameter material, mm. um, and usually it's not knurled. So. People will so put grip on all sorts element. of stuff. Yeah. So there's definitely grip element because it's slick. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the feel of bare steel. Um, <laughs> I think a really cool yeah, yeah. looking set are actually Steve Slater's. We keep coming back to the same people, but these people yeah, are so... Sure. There's they not are. that many manufacturers that make them, but Slater's are essentially uh, blocks of wood okay. um, that are squared off, and they've got rope-wrapped ends and a 45-degree angle loading post. They were used in the CrossFit Games in two... Oh, that's cool. 19? Who would have thought think... CrossFit would come up so often on the Strongman episodes? Look at you. <laughs> I you know. said you were yeah. hating on them. You keep bringing them up. <laughs> I, I know. So I, I like to talk. Well, I like to talk smack to athletes. Okay. But realistically, I think that strength sports in general, we owe a lot to CrossFit. Sure. And, and the accessibility that. So CrossFit is the marijuana yeah. of lifting. So <laughs> yeah, if you're yeah. looking for a good gateway drug, it uh, takes you're you looking in. for a good gateway sport, it takes you straight in. And I because mean, CrossFitters will inevitably see strongmen and be gym. incredibly jealous uh, and want to become strongmen and women. Yeah, yeah. I, I but, would agree. I mean, I I think it. a lot of the companies that home gym uh, owners buy from, you know, that was that was where they got their uh, big leap was CrossFit. Rogue to name yep. A big one. So when Absolutely. it comes to Farmer's Walk, just one last historical note that I think is kind of cool. Um, the giant Farmer's Walk handles I mentioned with Alexei Novikov carrying them in a picture, they weigh 353 pounds each. So that's mm. twice the weight of the original Farmer's Walk handles in World's Strongest Man back in 1983. So it's it's come along. It's, it's quite an event. Now, our last one we're going to go over here, I have a picture that I'll drop of it. And it has to do with carrying a large object as well. Only instead of in each hand, you're carrying it across the top of your shoulders and back. So any guess is what I'm talking about. I believe you're talking about, so originally called the super yoke. There you go. Or the yoke. Mm -hmm. That's what you're, that's what you're speaking of now there. But the roots of it all come back to the refrigerator. So back in 1977, <laughs> yes. have you seen the fridge carry? Oh, you almost yes. fell off your chair. You got so yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, I have seen the fridge carry. Okay. Absolutely. Do you know any of the, the lore and the story behind the fridge carry? I don't, no. Okay. I'm, I'm actually really right. excited that you're okay. going to tell me because well, here I have we go. no idea. Well, kind of like the weird trivia knowledge of knowing that the African, uh, what was it called? The Africa Stone was the only non-Atlas stone since it began. Um the fridge carry is the birth of the yoke. Now, yokes had been used for centuries on farms and for manual labor. You know, you'd put a yoke across your shoulders and you could hang buckets off of it. You could, you know, it was a way to carry things. But then fast forward, they're looking for a spectacle. So World's Strongest Man in 1977, the debut of it, they're looking for something that's going to catch people's attention. And to bring this two-part series full circle, they're looking for something relatable. Like, what's heavy that everybody probably has or knows what it is? I know. A refrigerator is a big, heavy object. Let's make these guys carry refrigerators. But how are we going to do that? So if you check out this picture, it's actually Bill Kazmaier that's in the picture. So shout out to Kazmanot. And... He's, there's kind of handles that come down 
from it and it's on your back, but it's resting on a bar that goes across. And that's the connection to the birth of the yoke. So in that event, a tragic little trivia is that Franco Colombo. So Franco Colombo, famous bodybuilder, best friend of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He, he won just about everything he could win, carried on a long career as a chiropractor afterwards. He had a severe leg injury in this event. So he's in the world's strongest man, 1977. He's got a refrigerator on his back and they're moving as fast as they can. And his, I believe it was his left leg bends in a way that no human being wants to see a leg bend. I mean, it, it is catastrophic. So I'm not going to drop a picture of that, but I'll just say that I'll drop a link to the video on home gym history on Instagram that it's pretty interesting in an interview afterwards he's being asked like oh you broke your leg and he's saying well no i'm a chiropractor i'm 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 in the medical field and i kind of know what happened i dislocated my knee that's why my leg you know moved that way so horrible accident horrible injury there but it carried on for a couple years and the 900 pounds fridge carry as fast as possible for 30 meters is what gave birth to the car carry have you seen the car carry Absolutely. Okay. So it's still taking place. The car carry is still a very popular thing, especially, I believe it's Giants Live. Yeah, uh, Giants Live. Yep. And yep. Yeah. So the car carry for listeners who have never, you know, seen it or viewers have never seen it. Viewers, I'll drop some pictures. There's been various cars. The very first car carry uh, back in 1993. Here's a picture of that. And then if we fast forward, there are, you know, some different cars used. There's even some Beatles. Uh, used and it's a race. It's just like the fridge carry, only it's a car. But on the inside of that car is a yoke. There's a bar sitting on their upper back and shoulders and traps. And then from there, uh, we've got what you brought up the super yoke. And with the super yoke, you can put odd objects. So these big bales of, I don't know, is it hay that, you know, for example, Brian Shaw won a 1,560 pound yoke carry yeah. uh, they had to throw the chains on to make it weigh that much too it was the second carry there you go so have you seen other things with the yoke like well, how does it happen for just a regular guy like me if i join a strongman competition what am i going to do with a yoke so generally speaking you're they'll just load plates on the plate loading posts sure but there's been all sorts of different objects that have been put on them so at world's strongest man which is kind of like the top end pinnacle mm -hmm. uh for our sport They'll have motorcycles or uh, they'll have yeah. people. So, like, uh, I think sure. it was Chengdu, uh, they carried people on chairs, <laughs> which imagine being like, hang on to this chair, yeah. don't fall off, uh, <laughs> and have fun. Because you see, you see the look of delight on the girls' faces oh my when gosh. they pick them up. That's uh, crazy. And then also, so it started, this is where it's unique. So, it started with the fridge carry. And that original mm -hmm. fridge carry, I'd like to point out, if I'm remembering right, mm -hmm. It wasn't a fridge on each side, although no. that did happen with Marius Pujanowski. It was a it fridge on the back, and basically yeah. they would kind of get underneath this frame that mm -hmm. had a fridge on their back, and they would pick it up kind of at an angle, and then they'd run with it. And if I remember, I think it had like two bars that would go on your shoulder. Yep. Um, and they kind of hold on to the bars. Yeah. Yep, and they'd hold on to the bars, and they would uh, run with it. Sure. Uh, but at World's Strongest Man, Marius Pujanowski kind of time frame, Big Z, Pujanowski, Young Brian Shaw, uh, uh -huh. there was uh, the fridge carry. There was. Where it was two fridges, one on each side <laughs> of a modern day looking yoke. And the funniest part about that whole competition is that one of them fell over. Oh, nice. Yes, nice. in the competition, someone finishes the run. And then it, it just. It might have been collapses. Marius. Yeah. And it, well, it just like fell forward, <laughs> like the guy ran out of the yoke and it just like that hit was the that. ground. I, uh, I'll drop a picture. I found a picture of a young half Thor, uh, setting a world record in the fridge carry. And it, I don't think it was world's strongest man though. He has on like kind of a different setup. It might've been like a record breakers thing. I'll dig into it. So yeah, the, the fridge is on either side. Now I, I'm not picking up my refrigerators or anything like that. A yoke from the outside looking in seems like a large thing to add to my very limited space home gym. But, yep. you know, what are the options for a home gym owner? The similar way I've been asking you with all of these implements, if, if I want to try out a yoke or why should I get a yoke if I'm getting into strongman? 
Yep. So if you want to try yoke out, find yourself a uh, strongman powerlifting or a CrossFit gym. Okay. Uh, the yokes are fairly popular in CrossFit to pu- push the CrossFit thing. Yeah. When I'm on the road, if I have yoke programmed, mm-hmm. so I go on the road a lot for work. And uh, when I'm on the road and I'm and I need to train yoke, I will usually look for either someone that I know that knows of a strongman gym in the area. I'll hit up the home gym Discord asking if anybody has. A, uh, a yoke that I could use in that area, mm-hmm. or I'll find myself a CrossFit gym because they're fairly common. The nice part about a CrossFit gym, though, I'm sorry, uh, about a yoke is that if you are building a gym from scratch and you want a squat stand, mm-hmm. a yoke is just a squat stand that has a cross member at the top okay. uh, versus a cross member at the bottom. Um, when I moved into this space, so this is Garage Gym 4 mm-hmm. for me, number four with all the moves I've had to do for the military. Yeah. And for several months, I don't remember how many months, but I used my my Power Center uh, Pro Economy Series yoke from Mike Bartos. Okay, and that was my rack. It was enough, yeah. I yeah, I didn't have the surplus strength arc rack behind me right now. Okay, I was waiting for it to get made, and so that's what I used. Uh, additionally, hmm. when I train with other people, if if I have different events going on, I'll usually set my yoke up, and I can set stuff up for them, hmm. so you can squat out of it. Uh, the other nice part is that my pro economy is taller, just like the Y1 from Rogue. Yeah. Or I think it's actually just called the yoke slash tall from Titan okay. or the taller oxalis yoke from Rep. Yeah, and, I saw uh, Rogue has, I can drop a pick, the Y1, Y2, the Y2 is taller. And then the Y3, which is like, yeah. uh, <laughs> do we have this? Um, yeah, yeah. You need like, I guess, 20-foot ceilings. Um, if you want to do... I don't know, pull ups off the top of it or something. I don't know. Rope climbs. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know who's doing throw. Maybe it could also be uh, for so like Highland Games. Okay. Or for for oh, sandbag nice. over the bar. Yeah, so throwing there we go. The yoke up. But I imagine trying a, to like stand that up. This past summer, I bought these really cheap. They uh, they were like whatever, fifteen bucks from Amazon. Uh, canvas. They were intended to be kettle bags like travel yeah. canvas t- kettle bags, but I wanted to try uh, throwing a sandbag and they're pretty expensive, like Cerberus and various other ones that make them. I'm like, man, I just want to try it. So I bought those and kind of like I said, with the, my cheap version of sandbags, if anyone wants to buy those things, cause they're made by like 22 different overseas companies. It's all the same thing. They're like 15 bucks. Those canvas uh, kettlebell things, as far as a throwing bag, they hold about 30 pounds before they break. And I, I, uh, I did that in, in my backyard and I did that in my, on my patio and I'd see if I could throw it over the basketball hoop that we have in our driveway. That was like my marker, the basketball hoop that I could raise and yep, lower 10 feet. Yep. Yep. So it's a lot of fun. So maybe the yoke could serve that purpose. I've seen people, um, do stones with their yoke to over bar, you know? Absolutely. So I, that's what I, I'll either do stones over my yoke mm-hmm. or I'll actually take one of my drop in safeties that has UHMW okay. on it and I'll use that going across. But yeah, yoke's a great option for that. There's, there's a lot of use for a yoke. And I think that, uh, so I know that historically they started out as a fridge, but yeah. when you look at the <laughs> modern take on yokes, I'm going to give rep huge credit here because yeah. They developed that oxalis yoke, which mm-hmm. has so much other use than just doing yoke carries because they have handles in it. So you can use it as a frame, which is just farmer's I handles that are It has together. like the, the I want to say, to push it as like a sled. It's got like the so the bottom of it. You can do you can do that with almost all yokes, okay. really. Fair enough. Um, you just lower the cross member down and push it. But it gotcha. does have, the rep one has purpose-built uh, vertical uprights in it so you can okay. push it. It's actually very similar. It's like a cross between a dead sled from MB Power Center oh. and a yoke. All right. Um, it's a great piece of kit. But if you're a home gym owner and you want to get uh, a squat stand, mm-hmm. and I say squat stand because if you want a power rack, a yoke won't do it for no, you. No, no. But if, if, a, if a squat stand will, because um, you can still put safeties on them. So yeah, like yeah. a Y1, 2, or 3 mm-hmm. will take 2 by 3 it's a two by three material, so you can use safeties. You can get those real long um, safeties, yeah. Yep, the the twenty four inch safety mm-hmm. arms, um, they they work great. But nice. uh, if you want to try one out, what I would say is uh, either go on Iron Mind, which yeah, is yeah. the United States Strongman or the North mm-hmm. American Strongman kind of search engine, if mm-hmm. you will, and look for a competition near you. 
yeah. and go try one there. I guarantee you that if someone showed up to a show, <laughs> as long as you're not in the way, no one's going to care. Yeah. Um, and a lot, a go lot ahead, of times, buddy, try it manufacturers. Out. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times, equipment guys will uh, bring stuff to the show with the intent of selling it um, because they want to bring all the stuff to the show, have mm-hmm. the competition and then sell. So made well strength. The last competition I did, nice. uh, he was selling everything he had there. I actually yeah, tried yeah. to buy a set of his farmer's handles that were really <laughs> nicely made. Um, but by I the saw time, his I farmer's told handles. Douglas, yeah. They're nice. And they're, they're, they're so nice. expensive. I, uh, yeah, I saw those. And then I'm also tempted to go back to farmer's handles to arm assassin. Arm assassin has, yes. um, their napalm well, assessing- series handles you can interchange. The napalm nightmares. Yeah. Yes. You can interchange yeah, in great. their farmers handles, which I think is kind of neat. So I don't know. I'm debating those things. But as far as a yoke, my wheels are turning here, and right in a moment, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about. I'm in Pittsburgh, so I can't work it out. I can't work out outdoors all year round comfortably, at least, and. Come springtime, I'd like to up my outdoor game a little bit. And I was thinking, oh, maybe as you're talking about this, maybe I'll get a yoke. And that will be like my outdoor kit. That will be my outdoor station because I can also squat. I could even, if I really wanted to, bench and drag a bench oh, yeah. underneath it. Uh, I could do whatever with it and then also use it for strongman purposes as a yoke. Now, the Oxalis is going about $845. That is a... Ooh, that's yes. an investment. So, but that's but that's three by three material. Exactly, that's the thing. So now, if you go down to like the Y two mm-hmm. or from Titan, I don't even know what they call. I it. forget. I think Titans. it's literally. I think it's yoke regular. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember. It's something. Um, they, they're basically it's a it's a row mm-hmm. just with Chinese steel. Yeah, and yeah. crappier welds. So rogue is yeah, that, uh, that's a good option. The smallest one, the Y one, is like five and ninety. Plus yep. tax shipping, um, and then I assume Titan goes down from there. Uh, but I love your suggestion that you know why not try it out. And my suggestion is to buy tickets for Home Gym Con. I can't guarantee at this time that there'll be a yoke there to try out. But if Jake is listening, make it happen, Jake. I want to try out a yoke. I'm on the market. And if any companies are listening, like you know Madewell Strength or any of the people we've mentioned, I want to try out a yoke. So make it happen in French Lick, Indiana, in April, and use code Vintage to save ten percent on your tickets. So if any of these things have tempted you over these past two episodes, and you're thinking, ah, oh, that's a lot of money. I don't know if I really want to buy this. Well, Home Gym Con will hopefully scratch that itch. Now, Kurt, I can't thank you enough. Thanks for stopping by. And the last thing I'll say is that we have barely scratched the surface of Strongman because what I love about Strongman is the variety. So last question for you. What haven't we covered? What can we do next time? What other implements exist? Uh, So we could do this all sorts of ways. So let's just talk about some of the more larger stuff. So like the big things that most people won't have in a home gym to start. So like Fingal Fingers, the, the, they had it for one year at the Arnold. It was like this hammer thing that you had to push up. Oh, cool. And then, yeah, they only had it for like a year. It's sitting in a warehouse somewhere. (laughs) When you walk in the warehouse, they probably think it's like some sort of weird sex dungeon thing. Um, uh, There is any sort of like... I'm actually having a hard time. There's a lot of stuff, but I'm having a mind fart here. Uh, you have a uh, duck walk, duck which is walk. Uh, actually a really accessible uh, home gym thing. We talked a little bit about who's um, but there is duck walk. Do they use the same thing for duck walk to climb those stairs where you're grabbing like a T shaped bar between your legs yes. that then have weights on it, almost like a loading pin situation, only with a T shaped bar at the top, the duck walk, you're, waddling so you know i hope viewers enjoyed that impersonation and <laughs> listeners <laughs> yeah. are missing out <laughs> and it's kind of funny to watch these like 300 to 400 pound dudes do the duck walk but then what's the event where you're climbing the stairs uh, power that stairs. is a thing power there you go okay power yep. stairs. so power stairs uh, i think our stairs that's interesting. Uh, the coolest one was actually in uh west virginia because they okay. went up the and it was like these three foot stairs they had to pick this thing up for the power stairs out there. Um, it was in the capital, like right across the border from Ohio. Nice. Um, well, listeners, viewers, all sorts. Kurt and I are clearly 
you know, we're missing some. So drop a comment. What other implements exist in Strongman and let us know because Kurt's not going anywhere. Well, I don't know. He, he keeps talking about dying, but I hope he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so be safe, Kurt. We care about you. And please care about Kurt a little more and go out and find him at the, is it the underscore Kurt Locker? Yes, it is. Uh, okay. The original Kurt Locker, the guy who owns just Kurt Locker, <laughs> I have DM'd him yeah. and told him that this is Highlander and there can only be one. Uh, I think he's blocked me or something because uh, he just never replies. If so anyone if knows look that guy, Kurt Locker, talk to him. And it's Kurt Locker with a K. So if you look up Kurt Locker with a K and it's like okay. some dude talking about clothes, it's not me. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to want to see like strongman lifts. So the underscore yes. Kurt Locker on Instagram and then hit him up on YouTube so you can see some of these things that he's been talking about and you can learn more about them. And of course, please like and follow and subscribe Home Gym History on Apple, Spotify and YouTube. This is Rob from Vintage Weights PGH and a big thanks to Garage Gym Radio for producing us. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you. See you next time, everybody.